The FBI, the Department of Justice, and Robert Mueller's crew investigating the Trump campaign had a very bad week. After months of keeping it a secret, special counsel Robert Mueller confessed that he booted the lead agent from his team, Peter Strzok, because he's an anti-Trumper. He sent over 10,000 text messages to another agent he was having an affair with, which contained anti-Trump and pro-Hillary commentary. Strzok was the agent who snuck up on Mike Flynn, put him under oath, and interviewed him without an attorney present. But there's more. Strzok also top investigator in the Hillary Clinton email probe. He interviewed Hillary, who was not put under oath, with her attorney, and then softened the language in Comey's draft letter exonerating her, changing the description of her actions from grossly negligent to extremely careless. Gross negligence is criminal, extremely careless is not. Strzok is also believed to have been connected to the Clinton-funded fake Russian dossier on Donald Trump. More on that later. Mueller's other lieutenant also caught sending anti-Trump messages. Andrew Weissman, who gave thousands of dollars to Obama and the DNC, sent an email praising Obama DOJ holdover Sally Yates for refusing to enforce President Trump's travel ban. Quote, I am so proud and in awe. Thank you so much. All my deepest respects. Wall Street Journal also reported Weissman attended Hillary Clinton's election night party in Manhattan. Then there's Jeannie Ree, another prosecutor picked by Mueller to investigate Trump-Russian matters. Here's her background. She's a Clinton donor who represented the Clinton Foundation and represented Hillary herself in the email investigation. She also represented top Obama official Ben Rhodes in the Benghazi cover-up investigation. Wow, fair and balanced, but it gets worse. Obama DOJ holdover Bruce Orr was just demoted after it was uncovered. He met secretly with the foreign agent who Hillary paid to concoct the fake Russian dossier and met with the president of the firm Hillary paid to produce the dossier. So what's going on here? Joining me now, former chair of the House Oversight Committee and Utah Congressman, Fox News contributor, Jason Chaffetz. So Chaffetz, this Mueller dream team looks like a nightmare now. What do you think? There is a major systemic problem within the Department of Justice, this deep state that we've been talking about. It's blossoming before our very eyes as we see the reality of how this investigation into Trump and the dossier and, and Hillary Clinton really went down. You had some highly partisan people who wore it on their shirt sleeves and didn't necessarily put a blindfold on and looking for justice. So do you think the investigation into Trump-Russia matters is completely corrupt now, beyond repair? And if so, what's to be done about it? Well, what you really need is Devin Nunes, who's the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, and Trey Gowdy, who also is the chairman of the committee that I used to chair, the Oversight Committee. He, Trey is also on, on the Intel Committee. They have been asking for access to personnel and documents for months on end. Yeah, but and there should be a flashing red light for everybody. Yeah, but they've been the FBI and the Justice oh, Department. They're exactly. not cooperating with any of the congressional investigators, which is very, very suspicious because I don't see any reason why they can't get along. Now, one of your other former colleagues, colleagues from Ohio, Jim Jordan, really, I think, pulled the thread on this whole conspiracy the other day. During the hearing with Ray, yeah. the FBI director, he concocted this theory, which I think is true. Peter Strzok, this anti-Trump guy on the Mueller team who was just, you know, kicked over to an HR office, he was the one that took the Hillary Clinton-funded fake Russian dossier, used it in applying for the wiretap in the FISA court, and it was granted based on the fake information, which was then used to spy on the Trump campaign. If that's true, if Hillary Clinton paid for the paperwork that was used as justification to spy on Trump that started this whole investigation, that's huge, or as Trump would say, huge. 
It is. It's not only a concern that the Clinton campaign paid for it, but maybe the FBI also paid for what was also used in the campaign. Right. It's a very viable theory that needs to be looked at in its in its depth. Uh, Jim Jordan is a very responsible member of Congress. He wouldn't just make that up. I think he has some deep seated reasons as to why he specifically asked that. Also, um, some of your four yeah. colleagues um, misbehaving this in the Senate. Al Franken resigned. We think yeah. we're not sure. Here's what he had to say on the Senate floor. Go ahead. Some of the allegations against me are simply not true. Others I remember very differently. I am announcing that in the coming weeks, I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office. All right, so we're going to get to the more Trump contrast in a second. But let me ask you first, when you were in the halls of Congress, were you hearing things? Was this a problem, sexual harassment? I know a lot of young people go right after college and work for congressmen. What was your take on the whole situation? Well, I don't want to cast dispersion on everybody, but there was always somebody doing something stupid somewhere. And there are some people that shouldn't work in Congress and they shouldn't even work at a Chuck E. Cheese. And, and so <laughs> did you I, know just about this? You, were it, you aware it, of the rumors it, when you were serving? You know, there's rumors and there's, you know, guesses and that sort of thing. I wouldn't say that it's pervasive in every corner, but there are certain individuals that you just look at and say, really? I mean, gosh, I hope everything's okay over there. Did you um, witness any, and, any and so some of that's been, Did you witness any suspicious behavior or anything that caught your eye and said, oh, that's that, that seems a little not, off? Yeah, no, no, nothing directly where you think, oh, my gosh, he shouldn't be touching her that way or shouldn't be talking to her that way. But, you know, Washington, D.C. is in large part run by 20 year olds. You have a lot of young people <laughs> early in their careers. You've got thousands of uh, of interns going around. And then you got members of Congress who leave their families for weeks on end. And that seems to be a recipe yeah. for. Well, yeah. not so, such good things. Right. Well, I mean, the fact yeah. that Washington's run by 20-year-olds maybe shows why we're in the place we're in. Um, let, let me play some sound from one of the Moore accusers, Beverly Young Nelson. She was the one that said Roy Moore, Senate candidate yeah. in Alabama, Republican, signed her yearbook. Turns out there was more to the story. Here's ABC News. Beverly, he signed your yearbook. He did sign it. And you made some notes underneath. Yes. Okay, so the story is, and I'll give you 30 seconds to break this down. He allegedly signed the yearbook, but then she wrote a bunch of annotated things underneath it, and now her whole allegation is thrown into question. You know, this election's right around the corner. What do you think? It goes to the credibility, the fact that the story initially came out four days after he wins the primary. Now we hear a days before and they're finally admitting, hey, you know, maybe everything that was written as we presented, nah, that wasn't necessarily true. You know, you've got people in Alabama that get to be the judge and jury here and make a decision come Tuesday night. Yeah, well, voters will decide. Congressman, thank you very much. Yep. Coming up, campus craziness of the week. You weren't there during that time, but if they were getting this information from a political party and then using it for surveillance against an opposition party candidate, that's a problem. Do you agree that that would be a problem for the American people? I, I do agree, Congressman, that any inappropriate use of the FISA process uh, for political purposes uh, is something that we should all be very concerned about and take very seriously. So we that's FBI Director Christopher Wray getting grilled on the Hill by my next guest, Congressman Ron DeSantis, who is fighting for the truth the American people deserve to know. Congressman DeSantis joins me live on the phone. Okay, so we couldn't get you uh, uh, to a studio. Congressman, we appreciate your being here. Uh, did you get any answers that day when you sat uh, and Christopher Wray appeared before you? Not what we had hoped for, Judge. Uh there's a number of pieces of evidence that Congress needs to have access to, starting from the role of this uh, guy, Peter Strzok, who got removed from Mueller's investigation. He was the lead uh, agent for Hillary, conducted the interview of things like Cheryl Mills, 
I, I think he was involved in the dossier. We want to know what his role is, whether the FBI paid for the dossier, whether okay. Strzok was involved in <laughs> using the dossier to get surveillance. We got answers of none of those. Okay. Now, given that you did not get answers, and we've been a asking questions for the better part of a year, uh, the, the question now is, and you can understand the frustration of the American people, the question is, we don't want to keep with this every day, you know, let's ask another question, we want answers. So, let's talk about contempt. Uh, Senator Grassley, chair of the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee, has sent three letters to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. And Rod Rosenstein has not answered any of them about Paul, uh, about uh, uh, Andrew McCabe and the FBI and the investigations of him by the DOJ, by the Inspector General, by the Office of Special Counsel, EEOC. And what do you do to get answers from Rosenstein? Well, he's going to come before the House Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, and it's my belief that if he's not willing to produce those answers, if he's not willing to produce some of the information that we've been asking about now for months, then Congress needs to hold him in contempt. You can't just thumb your nose at the American people and not produce documents and not produce witnesses that Congress is entitled to and think you're just going to get away with it. All right. Christopher Ray. Uh, did not answer a lot of the questions, especially a question from Jim Jordan regarding whether or not Peter Strzok was the affiant on that application for the FISA warrant. If that were the case, of course, then uh, there is a disaster for this nation where the FBI is getting involved in a presidential campaign with a fake dossier to destroy an opposing political party. So we didn't get an answer from Christopher Wray when the truth is he didn't have a legal reason to prevent us from finding out who signed that affidavit for the warrant. All right. What do that we do to Christopher Wray? Classified. Right. It is not classified. It's not sources and methods. Uh, there are some some interesting information about what may be in that affidavit, but we weren't even asking about that. We were just asking about was struck the affiant, and then did he use information gleaned from the dossier? Very simple question. So Devin Nunes, who's been doing a great job, he has warned both the FBI director and Rosenstein the deputy attorney general, that they're walking into a potential contempt of Congress. All and right. I told the FBI director that myself. I said, okay, your listen, aren't I have a short period no of time left. To do that. Uh, Congressman, R Ray, uh, uh, Christopher Ray, head of the FBI, will refuse to give you information. Rosenstein, I believe, is going to refuse to give you information. Are you and do you have permission of the leadership, Paul Ryan, to hold uh, Rosenstein in contempt if he appears in Congress and, and does not give you the answers that you want? Yes. So I spoke as uh, Jim Jordan and I spoke with the speaker. He is, correctly says we deserve this information. He wants the information. If we can get that before the hearing, great. But if not, he is absolutely prepared to authorize a contempt citation against the deputy attorney general. And just think about that, uh, being held in contempt. Eric Holder, I think, was the only other high government official who's been held in contempt, you know, in the last many yeah, but, years. But, Congressman, nothing happened to Eric. He was held in contempt. We want a contempt, if that is, is, is deserved, and then a sanction for contempt. Anyway, Ron DeSantis, Congressman, uh, we'll have you on next weekend to hear what happens. Thank you. Thanks, Judge. All have right. a good one. And what's the most outrageous thing you heard this week? Michael Tamaro is next, and we'll run down our list. Don't go away.